opportunity to really showcase all that the profession can do. And that first piece you heard from Follow Centric Lecture, uh, lecture came from, he was inspired by a painting with that title by Paul Clay. And it was of, uh, it's just a portrait of a woman, it's a quite abstract. And he uses a lot of very simple fragmented melodies and ostinato, and it kind of has, it, he draws a lot from African balafone, which would be like a, a xylophone. And so that's, that's what was behind that first piece. Now the second piece is the piece that I really want to talk about this evening because it's so unusual, and I have some of it in the program. This piece I saw first on YouTube, and I was immediately drawn to it. I really liked it, and then we've ordered the music, and it's about, I don't know, 12 pages of text, almost entirely, which was very surprising to me. This, it was not what I was expecting. Um, and when you get a piece like this, you have instructions on how the instruments would be created, because it's a very different type of piece. So um, one thing that he needed us to do was get some pitched instruments that would not be your standard xylophone and marimba, and we used pipes. And I had never done this before, although I had played on pitched pipes before, but I had never gone through the process of creating a pitch, and it's pretty complicated. We cut a piece of pipe, just a measured length, random, and then you hit that and you get the frequency. Okay, and then, then you want to find the mean resonating frequency of the material. I'm going to look at notes here because this was serious time. This Bob Weinman, our local rocket science scientist. Uh, so then you, you do that and then you, need, you have the frequency that you need and you take the uh, it's a square root. It was very complicated. <laughs> I was so glad to be done in school, and it was a nightmare scenario. But you can see, you can do it very accurately. I'll just play these pitches so you can hear them. So we did a pretty good job. Now the next thing, uh, this piece is by Jason Troyding, and he is fascinated with text and the rhythm that is in text. And so what he did in the piece, I don't know if anyone looked at these notes, but he assigns the consonants an eighth note value and the vowels a dotted eighth note value. And the consonants are to be played on the bass drum and the vowels are to be played on this setup we have here, which is a china symbol. And then this apparatus in the center here is a uh, cardboard toilet paper roll. <laughs> and, uh, duct tape. and then, you know, we always talk about our Home Depot pieces. This is one we have shelf paper, the rubber shelf paper, and then we have window insulation for the tubes to sit on. And so now what he does, I'm going to play one of these examples for you. He has picked six cities, and basically with the spelling of them, that, that creates the rhythm. So Denver, I'll play the Denver Helena which is kind of one of the main rhythms that goes on the whole this. So that's, that's how that rhythm is played. And what happens is uh, two of us start with that, Mike and I, and then I break off and play Helena, Denver, a 16th note ahead of him. So we're going, and then later on you see this section of canon. And what he does is he has all four of us going through and playing those cities in order. My parents are here tonight and they are freaking out because I am a horrible, horrible speller. <laughs> this piece was challenging. Um, and then later on, he'll just take away, you'll just hear us, he'll add pipes to it. So we'll be playing, it'll go like this. So when you're hitting the vowels, you're also hitting specific pipes, and then later on you'll hear, so we're just playing the vowels of those cities in that order. So I think that you need a little bit of background on this piece to kind of understand it. And it sounds like it shouldn't make any sense, but in the end, it's, it's a really interesting piece. Um, they are gonna play some, some chords over here that are in seven, eight time. Um, and I hope you enjoy this piece. <laughs>
eight movement piece, we will only be doing four movements this evening. And all I will say about it is that he wrote for a familiar instrument to be played in an unusual way. Please enjoy.
tiny bit of that music so that you can see what that would look like. And you may have seen it with the straight face and the open mouth and the smiling face, and that's when the flashlight would be under your chin. And then also the circles indicate to depress the light, and then he shows you with arrows what directions your hands would go. And the, the below the line is the left hand, and the below the line is the right hand. So I, I always get questions about what does percussion music look like, so that's why I included little bits and pieces of unusual things that we come across. Um, I just want to say just a little bit about the last piece on this concert, which um, I'm so jealous of these students that they get to play it, because it's one of my favorites. It's an incredible piece. Um, have most of you or any of you heard of Steve Reich or heard any of his music? Excellent. And this uh, sextet he composed in the early 80s, I think around 83, 84, I think was the first performance. And it's A, B, C, B, A form. The A is the fast movement, the B is the medium tempo, and the C is the slow movement. All movements flow a tanka, straight through. Um, and some unusual things that he did is he wanted to, you know, the keyboard instruments that, that you hear up here, uh, he wanted to elongate the tones, because oftentimes we strike it and it doesn't ring for very long. So he's going to use, just like we saw in the first half, a lot of melodies played with bowed microphone. So that's unique for uh, one of his pieces. Um, also, back in the 80s, they didn't have these larger marimbas that you see, these five octave marimbas. So he also added in some synthesizer in the back to extend the range a bit, and also the bass drum to bring out some of the low tones. Um, I think when you're listening to his music, if you haven't heard it before, just, just let it happen. Relax. <laughs> Don't try to understand it. You'll probably lose where B1 is. I think that's what's intended. Just let it happen. And then, as a, another musical example that I have, if it's on the highlighted section, what he's done there, that's called close canon. So he has the two vibraphones and the two brimbas playing the exact same notes, but they're exactly one beat apart. And right there, you see that it's full format. But as he's doing the, the piece, he builds each little one of those motives a few notes at a time until you get the full pattern and then they're off of each other. So that would be another interesting thing to watch for. Um, I will tell you the piece is almost 25 minutes long, just so you know uh, how long it is. <laughs> and I think, and I really hope you enjoy it because it's an amazing piece. And one last thing I'd like to say is a thank you to um, all the compeers. I was a student here, and it was the best summer of my youth. And I see these young fellows here, and. They are having an incredible time, and a big part of that is thanks to the Compere program, and that goes for not even uh, the non-percussion Compeers who are here. All of you, uh, these young individuals, they remember this summer for the rest of their life, and they especially remember how you make it so special. So I'd like to thank you all for that, and thanks for coming tonight. Enjoy the last piece. Thank you.